Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I just hit 50k subscribers on YouTube. This number seems crazy for me. So as I promised in the past, I decided to bring this video for you guys where I'm going to basically go over everything about my journey um, through coding ever since the first line of code that I've ever wrote until now, just so that it can maybe inspire you guys or just give you guys some insight that you previously didn't have. So this is my six year coding journey. And I know some of you guys will be like, oh my God, I need to, I don't know, spent six years learning to get to where he is right now uh, but that's not true whatsoever because throughout this whole journey there were many periods where i got demotivated i stopped coding and just many like rough patches that i'll be going over this video so i'm excited just to say as a thank you for all of you for supporting my channel thank you so much for 50k and let's get into the video story will start with a 15 year old Pedro living in Brazil. I kind of always liked uh, anything like technology related. So when I was getting into my like the later stages of my teenage years where I st had to start thinking about my future, um, I started searching different jobs and careers in the technology space. Back then, I kind of had this dream of making an app, but actually had no idea you had to write code to do something like that. Since um, in Brazil, if you want to be a programmer, uh, you get very little support uh, from anyone, actually. I lived in Brazil for 18 years, and uh, I was never offered any computer science subject at school. No one ever talked about being a programmer. It's actually a career that a lot of people uh, don't like in Brazil for some reason. So I knew that in order to learn it, I would have to do something on my own. So when I had my December break from school in 2016, I decided to watch a YouTube series um, teaching how to make a game. Now you may think, what language was my first language? I, I think I mentioned this in the past, but um, a lot of people will be surprised to know that the language I chose was actually Java. Now Java is an incredible language, and I honestly think it is one of the best languages for a beginner, since it introduces very early um, important topics like design patterns, object-oriented programming, just uh, it teaches you how to write better and cleaner code. Now, none of that really mattered in the beginning because I, I was just starting out and I really had no idea what I was doing. Um, but what I decided to do was watch this um, series over here that I'm going to show you guys from this YouTuber. Um, it's pretty good. I actually learned a lot from it. After spending weeks trying to follow the series, I realized that I was doing two of the biggest mistakes that now, now I see a lot of early programmers doing, which is I was just following what the tutorial was teaching me. Like I, was, I wasn't actually learning anything. I was just copy and pasting. And... I actually chose a tutorial way more way too advanced for me. So I literally just gave up because I thought coding was something for genius people. But then I came back a month later and I actually stick with it this time. I finally built my first game, which I've never showed on my YouTube channel before, but I'm showing you right now a picture that I found from 2016 of it. Um, it's a, kind of like a, a little Pong game where um, there's two paddles and you can, like I, I customized it. I made it so that like, you could change the colors of, of the paddles and whatever. It was just a simple game, but honestly, for my 16 year old head, I was very proud of it because um, I had no idea I could possibly do something like that. And with just a couple weeks um, of learning and actually putting a lot of effort, I was able to do it. Soon after this, I realized that um, games in real life, the games that I played on my console, like my PS4 or, or my Xbox, uh, they aren't really coded um, through Java or, or through the ways that the libraries that I was using. Many of them use actually uh, engines. So I transitioned into learning C Sharp using the Unity engine. Now, this was kind of an iconic moment for me because I was transitioning from my first language, which was Java, to a new language. So I was finally learning a new language. Um, but C Sharp isn't that different from Java and I didn't have a lot of difficulties with it because of the similarity between the languages. It's not like I was transitioning from Java to, I don't know, JavaScript or Python. I was transitioning to, between two languages that, which are very similar and I really liked it. Uh, I really enjoyed making games. So in, I think like two months, I was able to um, build a very, very simple 2D platform game, which I love because I, I was able to play with my friends. It had like a bunch of levels, which you could play around with. There were actually made music, like a personalized song for each of the levels. And honestly, I, I really liked it. It was a great experience. It is always a good experience when you are a beginner and you don't have deadlines for jobs or anything like that, because you can literally just have fun with what you're doing. The problem is that this fun period of my coding journey kind of was getting to an end because I was actually getting to the end of 10th grade and I realized that I really needed to focus on um, realizing what would be my career in programming. 
although I lived in Brazil my whole life and I actually really loved the country, um, I knew that I, if I wanted to develop my career, if I really wanted to become a, a very big programmer, I couldn't just stay in Brazil because Brazil, as I mentioned before, didn't have great support for the industry. And I realized that I needed to either go to the US or Canada. So I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how I would do that. I also decided that the way to go would be to learn web development because it's crazy to see that nowadays every single company has a website, right? Not every company makes games, not every company have apps, but literally every company will have a website. So that means that there is a web developer position for every single company out there. Like from the smallest to the biggest companies, there will always be a, a demand for a web developer. So I realized that I had to get into the field and um, just learn as much as I could from it. So the first thing I did was I went to W3 schools, which is that the green website, I already forgot how it looks, but um, it's one of the web, the most famous websites for learning how to code. And I just learned HTML and CSS from that. Um, it took me like three weeks to get the basics of it because anyone who've tried to learn HTML and CSS know that it isn't actually that hard. Um, it becomes harder when you learn JavaScript, which is kind of what happened with me because after I, I felt comfortable with HTML and CSS, I tried JavaScript and I failed miserably. I didn't understand a lot of the JavaScript syntax. Um, so I actually went with jQuery. I learned jQuery because in 2016, jQuery wasn't um, as dead as it is right now. React was still very new at that time. So uh, it was hard to, to know if jQuery would be the future or not. Um, so I just learned jQuery and uh, I actually bought a book, which I don't have right now because I left it in Brazil, but it, it's a book uh, just teaching PHP. And the reason why I chose PHP is kind of funny. Um, it is because it was one of the, it was a backend language used to create Facebook. And um, I know a lot of people will relate to this, but watching the social network, which is a movie about how Facebook was founded was an amazing source of motivation for me, like insane amount of motivation. I watched that movie like 50 times in a span of like two months, just so that I could continue motivating myself to continue coding. Um, I, don't, I don't, it's been a while since I watched it, but it was my favorite movie. It's still my favorite movie of all time, uh, just because of the impact it had in my life. Now, PHP was great because uh, it was the first backend language I was learning. And it is a language that, in my opinion, is specifically made for being used for backend, right? It, it, it has all the things you need to create a backend server. And that continued for about like three months. Um, I continue making like projects using HTML, CSS, PHP, uh, jQuery, and MySQL for the database as well. Um, but after three months, I, I just gave up, I, I lost motivation. And uh, it's another like another break uh, in my path, which um, I think in the, in the long run worked out. But at that time, I thought I gave, uh, like I had given up on programming for a while. And after giving up, I actually stayed without coding for like two years. Um, I spent a lot of my years between 16 and 17 years old, just enjoying my youth, like going to parties, uh, hanging out with my friends, just enjoying my high school life. Cause I, I, I had my ultimate goal in mind. I knew I wanted to be a programmer, but I also felt that um, there was no need for me to start that early, you know? Like, obviously, I could be the best programmer in the world if I just spent 99% of my time focused on that. I feel like that's the case with everyone. But why would you spend want to do that with your life when there's much more than just your career? So I I just didn't code at all. I, I still remembered a lot of the stuff, but I just didn't had I didn't want to. I wanted to wait and enjoy whatever time I had left in high school so that I could focus on that uh, during university next time I coded anything was actually the summer before I graduated. So I graduated uh, in May 2019 and from high school and I was going to attend the University of British Columbia in, which is the university that I study uh, in September or August, something like that of 2019. So in between May and August, I spent the whole summer just relearning um, how to code games in Unity because it was the funnest thing I had done um, throughout my whole, my whole journey. Like creating games is really cool, by the way. Um, it's one of the things that I love the most. I just don't do that much anymore, but it's one of the most funnest things you can do. Now, the whole summer I spent creating two games, which I actually finished and published on the App Store. They were both mobile games, which I really enjoyed because being able to finish a project is an amazing sensation. Being able to like post on Instagram and talk to your friends about it, just promote your game is, is amazing. People like you're showing off your work, your hard work and all that you learned and people can actually enjoy from what you made. 
Now, I'm gonna be honest, the first game was kind of bad, but the second one was actually kind of cool. But they were very simple, which doesn't mean that it is something bad. Um, it just means that uh, I, I was able to finally complete something. And that's important for everyone, completing your project, just not skipping from one thing to another. That's crucial in your coding journey. The issue is that immediately after this, I had to go to my first year at university. And the reason why I say that's an issue is that I actually hated studying anything related to CS at university. Now, this is nothing wrong with my university. I love uh, UBC. I love um, a lot of the departments here. Uh, the thing is that I personally didn't like the way that CS is taught at universities. Now, I know I'm speaking from a position of privilege because a lot of people would want to, to study at university. A lot of people can't. Um, study a CS programming, but I really didn't like what was uh, what was being presented for me. I really didn't like the courses I was taking. I felt like um, I could learn most of that stuff online. And if I'm going to pay international tuition for this university, I, I would rather pay for something that I really, really don't think um, I could just find online, you know? So for that reason, I made the hard choice of actually transitioning and becoming a math major on my second year of university. Now, did this pay off? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know. I'm not good at math. Uh, I actually, it's not one of my best subjects. Um, in high school, I never took advanced math. Uh, I chose this because I was taking my math top, my math subjects, which were required for CS as well. And I just realized that I liked going to class for those, but I didn't like the CS ones because going to class and seeing a math professor explaining to me the topics um, just made me feel like I was finally being taught something that um, could have use for me in the future, which I personally couldn't uh, learn on my own. So uh, that's basically why I'm a math major. And it was actually in between the first and second year of university, which I decided to pick up coding full time. Now, what does that mean? Well, I was so demotivated by how my first year went, um, like studying wise, that I basically didn't code anything other than the required course um, stuff in my first year. Um, but after my first year ended, I COVID just hit and I just used the time to learn as many technologies as I could. So that's when I learned React.js, Node.js, I relearned HTML and CSS, I learned as much as I could from JavaScript, and it's basically where everything started to go right for me coding-wise. Everything literally just started clicking for me, you know? I made my research, I, I, I got the motivation ready, I, I knew what I was doing, and I had a goal in mind. And that goal was to get some sort of internship or position by the end of the year. And what I did was I I, I just worked so hard for it. I, I, I learned all the technologies. And in the meantime, I was actually recording me teaching myself the topics so that I could further understand what I was learning. And from that, I, I had some videos on my computer and I decided to post one of them. That's my first video ever posted in this channel. And I, I don't know why, I just got the feeling that I should continue posting. So I continue making some tutorials for you guys. Uh, and basically no one watched my videos, but uh, with time it just picked up. Uh, and that's, I, I feel like it's with everyone. It literally just picked up, people started watching and I started asking people to request new video ideas. Now, believe it or not, everything that I know past React and Node, I learned because of you guys. Because I would ask my subscribers to comment what videos they wanted to see, and I would literally just read a comment uh, of a suggestion, study whatever topic they wanted to see as much as I could, and just make a video about it. So for example, someone would comment something like, oh, how, can you make a video on how to integrate PayPal uh, with React.js? And I obviously didn't know how to do that. So I would spend like the whole day or the whole night just learning that and re-recording videos, trying to explain as better as like as much as I could for that person and then post that video. And all of a sudden, now I have that little piece of knowledge of how to do something that I didn't have before. And I continued doing that for like a year. And a lot of you guys were watching those videos and you guys were the source of of my learning because I was I forced myself to learn whatever you guys needed to and I got to the point where um, I started applying for uh, positions and internships and I got one of my dream internships last summer I was able to intern for Twitch which just added on top of everything else I learned so much there um, I learned Go the programming language I further learned a lot about GraphQL which I knew before but there's no comparison the amount they taught me uh, at the company. Um, and that's basically it. Cause I, after that, I, I continue learning every day. I continue seeing you guys' suggestions. I continue reading. Um, I continue learning uh, the new technologies that come out. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. 
So in six ears, you can see that uh, most of my initial ears weren't actually coding. It's just been six years since I wrote my first line of code. So it kind of applies that 80-20 rule that people say in economics, right? So 20% of my coding journey represents 80% of my learning. Uh, just like a small portion of my coding journey was the time where I was the most focused, the most productive, and that's when I learned the most. I don't know how you guys will react to this story because I don't know what you guys expected my story to be. I know I create random expectations of how a life of, of someone who is in a good position is. Um, whenever I see someone working at Google or Amazon, I always put themselves, I put always put them in a pedestal thinking that, oh, they, they must be geniuses. But I, I don't think that's the way to go. Most of my coding journey, I actually spent failing. And you can see it worked out in the end. So if you're in a position where you're stressed out about your coding or anything programming related, don't worry. It will be fine. It will work out in the end of the day. So this is basically it for the end of the video. I really hope this video was good. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. You gain value from it. I really hope it could inspire some of you guys because honestly, I, I don't get how I deserve 50,000 subscribers. I don't get what happened in the previous two years for me to get to this position. I'm just grateful that you guys are out to support me because whenever I'm demotivated, I read you guys' messages. I read the comments and it just... It just keeps me running through the day. So I couldn't appreciate it more. I couldn't thank you guys more for 50K subscribers. My goal for the end of the year is 100K. And if I reach that, I don't know. I, you guys have surprised me in the past, uh, like right now. So um, I don't know, it, it would just be amazing. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below and comment what you wanna see next. I see you guys next time.